All right, we're going to get started now. So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you for joining us here today for the Smith Master of Finance information session, where we're going to discuss the program offered through the Smith School of Business. Just a couple of housekeeping items uh, for anyone joining us. Just like to let you know that once you're registered for this information session, you will receive a copy of the recording. Uh, so if there is anything that you miss, you can always go back to or, or you can check out our YouTube channel or it will be emailed to you. Uh, you will get a copy of this recording so you can revisit anything that you may not have understood or anything that you may have missed. Also, uh, I please ask that you keep all questions to the end because there are certain things that we're going to cover and they, that may answer your question. Uh, so we will leave some time at the end to answer any and all of your questions as long as time allows. So please, if you don't mind, if you can leave all your questions for the end. Today is a very special uh, information session. It's going to have a little bit more of a content. So if you're interested in, in, in applying for the program, we're just going to give you some tips and tricks uh, for how to submit a successful application. So let's get started. So just like to let everyone know that uh, Smith Toronto, and if you see me looking off to the side, it's because I have uh, two, two screens at the moment. Um, so Smith Toronto is situated on the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat and the Piton First Nations, the Seneca and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We are grateful to be able to live, learn and play on these lands. So, why are you here and what is this program that we're presenting on today? So this is the Smith Master of Finance program. It is a one year full time while you work program. So this is not a research based based program. Uh, we focus on experiential learning. So a lot of the content that you're going to be learning in the program is stuff that you can use next day of. So students are encouraged to be working while taking this program based on the schedule. It will allow you to work while taking it. And it is a full time. It is considered a full time program and it is offered out of our Smith Toronto facility. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So first, let me introduce myself. So my name is Gary Hines. I am the director for the Master of Finance program here at the Smith School of Business. Uh, so my role really entails doing the, putting on these information sessions to give uh, everyone who is interested in the program the information about the program. I also uh, deal with the interviews. So if you are make it through the first steps or this through the stages of the program, and then you get to that final stage, it will be an interview with myself just to get to know you a little bit better and understand your motivations for wanting to take the program. But before that, before you get to me, you are going to, if you are to submit your application, you will be paired with an application advisor and your application advisor is Jen Mayer, who will be joining us today and she will be going through the, her application tips and things that she's seen over the years of the program. So she's going to introduce herself uh, in a little bit and she's going to tell you about uh, how you can become a successful applicant for the program. Oops. Slide doesn't want to move. All right. So the, the program itself, um, it provides a, a deeper and broader understanding of, of finance. So when you're, if you're looking to get into this program, so as I mentioned, this is, we focus on experiential learning. So we don't just focus on the theory. So you're not just going to be reading about these things in book. We focus on real world application. So a lot of the things that we're teaching in the program, you're going to be able to take and use it in your workplace. That's why we really encourage people to be working while taking the program. But if you're not working, that's more than fine. A lot of the lessons and the, the tools that you're going to learn throughout the program will help you in the future or help you in your job search. So you will get a solid uh, understanding of the current financial climate and market trends. Uh, and some of the courses that we teach are certain things like 
communication. So this will help you to be able to communicate your ideas and information accurately and concisely. And this is one of the areas that we differ from the CFA. So a lot of people ask, well, what is the difference between the CFA and this program? Uh, we always say that the CFA kind of focus on the theory side of things, whereas our program goes a little bit deeper than that and really gives you those practical, the practical knowledge that you need to take your career to the next level uh, and dive a little bit deeper in finance. Um, we do have people in the program who are CFA charter holders, and that's just to talk. About, that's just to, to say that the program goes a little bit deeper than the CFA program itself. So we do have a, a big part of our program focuses on teams. You will be working on a team throughout the entire program in one form or another. So we do have a high performance teams, and we do encourage students to be working in a very diverse team. You will also have the ability to gain some personal development uh, that will help you thrive in today's business. And then we have access, you'll have access to job opportunities through our Smith uh, Career Advancement Center. So in terms of the learning format for our program, uh, our program is delivered in a mix of online and live formats. So it gives you the maximum flexibility flexibility for if you are working. So our program starts once every year. So there's only one start date. That start date typically is in June. And then our program runs all the way to April the following year. Um, so we do have that one start. Our program is a blend of online and live sessions. It is an in-person program for the most part but we are going to adjust our format and allow for some in, for some online delivery of a couple of our courses as well. As a, uh, our classes happens once every week. So if you have class, you'll have class on a Monday and then every alternating weekend. So one class in a week, that'll be one of your courses. Then every other weekend, there'll be another course happening. So at any given time, you'll be taking two courses, two separate courses at the same time, but it doesn't happen back to back because again there is that flexibility for you to take this program and be working so it'll happen in the evening time uh, during the week and it'll be a full day on a weekend as i mentioned our program is offered out of our downtown location so we're located at 200 front street west so we're minutes away from bay street and minutes away from union station so it's a great central location downtown toronto uh, that is very accessible for anyone who is working on Bay Street, or even if you're coming from somewhere further away, Union Station is that that, that central location that is very accessible um, to the facility. So during the program, we will have a one week in person in Kingston, uh, which everyone is required to, to, to take. So if you're interested in taking this program, you will have to ask for that week off if you are working to be with us in Kingston. I'll talk about that in person session in a little bit. Then at the midway point of the program, we will have a three day session in Smith, Toronto. Uh, throughout the program, you will receive ongoing coaching and career support. I'll discuss that a little bit more. We also want to advance your experiential learning. So there are also opportunities for you to join clubs, case competition, and there are always networking events that we have. So our program itself is designed in a way where we have a blend of tenured research prof who come from Kingston to teach in the program, but we also have adjunct professors. These are people who have worked on Bay Street or are currently working on Bay Street and they come and teach uh, in the program on the side. So it's an excellent way for you to get a mix of both the research side of things and then the practical side of things from people who are actually working in the industry. In terms of our courses itself, here's a look at our core courses. So you are required to take a total of 10 courses. Eight of those are going to be core, and then two are going to be the electives that you can select. So we start off our program with corporate finance and financial statements analysis, quantitative analysis and economics, advanced financial modeling, which is taught by the Marquee Group, which is one of Canada's premier modeling organizations. So it's taught, taught by... Um, so it's taught by the founder of the Marquee Group. And what this, this, what this, uh, this course is about is that it's going to teach you how to create a financial model from scratch. So this is another way that we differ from the CFA is that you are going to learn how to build a financial model from scratch. 
Uh, then we have equity markets, fixed income instruments and markets, advanced portfolio management. As I mentioned earlier, we have communication and finance, which is going to help you with your communication style. Because a lot of the times we realize that people have a lot of information in their mind. They, have, they know a lot about finance and content. But sometimes you're delivering that message to someone who may not have any the slightest idea what you're talking about. What we're doing is trying to make sure that you're able to commu communicate your ideas in such a concise manner that anyone who doesn't necessarily have the knowledge, they can understand what you're saying. We wrap up our core course uh, courses with derivatives and that completes your core courses for the program. Sorry, just let me, next slide. Then we will move on to our electives. So out of these electives, you're going to choose two out of the five. So every year what we do is we look at our electives offerings. We look at the courses that we're offering and we wanna make sure that what we're offering is what is in demand is what's going to help our students become the best version of themselves and, and to be able to succeed in the marketplace. So out of these five, you get to choose two of the electives. You can choose from financial technology and innovation, intro to alternative investment, investment banking, AI and finance, and sustainable finance. Sustainable finance was the latest one we added to our electives. This one was added, I want to say about three years ago, maybe four years ago. And it's slowly become, it started off very small, but it has slowly become one of our more popular uh, elective courses. So out of all of these five, you'll be able to choose two. Once, you're, once you've completed your electives, that is it for the program you've wrapped up and you're able to graduate. So let's talk about the in-person session and what this is. So if you take a look at the picture on your right, what you're looking at here is Goods Hall. So this is in Kingston, Ontario. I know I mentioned to you that this is a fully in-person program offered out of our Smith Toronto facility located in downtown Toronto. So some of you may be scratching your head right now and wondering, why are we going to Kingston? What is the point of going to Kingston if this program is offered downtown Toronto? Well, let me tell you why we do this and what is the benefits that co come from uh, having this session in Kingston. So one of the reasons why we do this is because Kingston is a beautiful, a beautiful uh, city that we love to go to, beautiful town. And we always love bringing our students there. We always love bringing them to the campus. And why do we love bringing them to the campus? Because if you were not a student at Queen's University before, or you did your undergrad there, then you would not have had the great fortune of being able to experience Goods Hall. So this is a Goods Hall in Kingston. And it's a beautiful facility and we love to get our students there. So as I mentioned, you will be required if you are working to take that week off to be with us in Kingston. And this is an excellent opportunity for you to get to know your classmates. Because of the design of our program where you're coming in one week and then every alternating weekend, you don't get that opportunity to really get to know your classmates, help to build that network. Because a network is a big and important part of this program is because you get to network with your classmates, get to know them a little bit better, get to work with your team. So this is an excellent opportunity for all of our students to get to know each other, to build your network. Another reason why we do this is because you get to finish one of your courses. Corporate finance and financial statements are going to be started and finished during that week. So it is an intense and busy time during this week, but it is an excellent opportunity for us to get to, to finish off that course. And, you know, don't worry, don't be scared. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it is really a fun time. It's one of the best times our students have during the program. Some of you may be coming in, you're maybe a little bit more senior and you've worked for a very long time. And... We, we do this so also that you can you can feel like a full time student for this week. You know, the structure of the program is like you, it, it almost feels like it's part time, even though it is a full time program. So we want you to feel like a full time student for this week. Get to go back to those days where, where you were an undergrad, if you left home and you were away and, you know, you had those times. This is an excellent opportunity to, for you to feel like a full-time student again. It's a really great experience and we really love bringing our students here in the summertime. It's really beautiful and it's one of the best times throughout the entire program. 
Let's take a look at the schedule and what it typically looks like for us in, in, in during that week. So it is a busy week. It is jam packed with a lot of activities. Uh, so the only thing students are responsible for for this session is getting to Kingston and returning from Kingston. The program itself will take care of your meals, your accommodations, parking if you're driving. All of that is covered by the program. So you just have to get to Kingston. As I mentioned, you're going to be doing a few courses during that day, so it is a busy time. It's not just a vacation. You are you do have coursework that you will have to complete. You'll get to meet your team, get to build those relationships. But then we do have fun things planned. We do have our Smith Challenge. We do have a boat cruise that we do every year. We do have the introduction to Quaff. You get to meet the CAC. That's our Career Advancement Center. So you get to meet a lot of people. So it is a fun time as well, even though it is jam packed. So don't be too, don't be too scared and, and don't get scared off. It is a great time and trust me, you will enjoy it. So let's talk a little bit about the Career Advancement Center. As I mentioned, this is something, this is a, this is a department that you're gonna have support through uh, for the entire time you are in the program. Our career team is broken up into two different groups. So we have our career coaches. These are the ones you can make the one-on-one -on -one appointments with for you know salary negotiation help, uh, resume creation or resume work, your LinkedIn profile any strategy. So you can book one-on-one -on -one appointments with them throughout your year in the program. And they can help you with a lot of a lot of things with regards to your personal growth and your career development. They also, we also help with interview prep. We also have, have workshops to help you with those coffee chats. Some people are inter international students and you may not be uh, accustomed with coffee chats. Myself, I came here as an international student. I'm from the small island of Grenada. Uh, I came here as an international student and the concept to me of the cold calling and the coffee chats was a very foreign concept to me and not something I was generally comfortable with. But it, with the great support of the Career Center, they really help break it down for you and help you with strategies that can help you feel a little bit more comfortable in terms of doing those coffee chats and reaching out to those alumni to help you with your career development. On the other side of it, we do have another group and those are that's our corporate relationship teams. So they're the ones that are responsible for going and make those relationships with the banks, pension funds, asset management firm, and to get them to come to the campus to do with recruitment. So they're a very big part of the program. Anytime there is any type of job opportunity available, you will have access to that through the career platform, which is called Quest. Um, so you will have access to that during your time as a student. So you will receive support throughout your career journey. So I did mention that this program itself is a, we are focused on experiential learning. Um, and we do have our students take part in a number of case competitions. So we have our Smith Women in Finance, it's a club run uh, through the program and they will run a, a case competition and invite students from other from other schools to take part in this competition. We are also, we also take part in our CFA ethics challenge or CFA research challenge, Van Berkham small cap case competition, national investment banking competition. So these are all the ways that students can get that extra, um, extra knowledge and extra, extra practical, practical uh, knowledge that they, they would require to become a little bit more successful or, or just advance their career. So it's an excellent opportunity for our students to continue to low, learn, develop, and grow while in the program. There are also clubs that you can become part of. Yeah, you know, it is, it is a university, it is a while you work program, but we do have ways for students to get involved. So you can be a class executive. So you could decide to be the class president for your section. They are, are voted in by your peers. Then we also have the Smith Women in Finance, as I mentioned, you can also become part of that. Then we have QAF, which a lot of people have heard about. It's a Queen's University Alternative Asset Fund. So it's a fund of funds, it's managed by our students. So it's a hedge fund managed and they're managing real money. So this is not like a stock market simulation that you're playing with, with money that's not real. They're actually managing real money approximately $500,000 in their portfolio. It probably is more by now. So they, these students get the opportunity to manage real money. And this is a student run club. This was started by uh, some MBA students, uh, I think with about $6,000. And that portfolio uh, has grown through endowments by alumni, corporate sponsors. 
and now they're managing uh, funds of about $600,000. So this club itself is run by our students and it was run only with the MBAs and MFIN students. Well, first the MBAs, then the MBAs invited the MFIN students. But a few years ago, our, our, uh, the executive team for the club realized that there was a lot of information that they were not capturing. Uh, so then they decided to invite the analytics program and the AI program, the Master of Finance Information Technology program. So we have the program is now run across all different programs, and it's a great opportunity for students. It's very competitive to get in there, but you know I think we are the one of the first schools to ever have something like this. I don't know if any other school has one right now, uh, but it's a great opportunity for our students to really learn about managing money. And then we have our Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Indigeneity Club. It's just make sure that everyone feels like they can be their authentic self while in the school. So it's really pro promoting inclusivity while you're in our program and in the university itself. So this is Julius. So Julius was a part of the program. He was also the CEO for Quaff during his time. One of the things that he mentioned here, I'm not going to read the full quote. I'm just going to mention this part. Uh, we were investing real money, so we had to do real research. When I came in as CEO, I wanted to ensure there was a process around everything. I used what we were doing as part of the CFA research challenge and brought it to Quaff. So he was he took part in our in the case competition as a part of Quaff. So he's one of those students that was involved in many different things and being part of the being part of the case competition also helped him make cough, helped him in the program, helped him afterwards in terms of his job search and his uh, or his movements within uh, different different careers. So it was it's an excellent uh, opportunity for students to really grow. All right, then there are other ways, there are other things that we do. As I mentioned, experiential learning doesn't really stop there. We do have workshops that we host every year, a merger and modeling. Uh, capital restructuring and modeling workshop, again, hosted by uh, the Marquee Group. We have a CFA prep that you can get involved in. We also give students access to, if they want to in, in, in learn more about our Python Tableau, you will have access to Udemy throughout your year in the program. So that's just if you want to do some self-learning, because you know if you are here, you're interested in continu continuously learning. Uh, there are leadership opportunities. That's where I mentioned uh, what I mentioned about with the class president. So you do have an opportunity for that as well. We're also a proud partner of the CFA Institute. So we do offer scholarships every year for our students who are writing different levels of the CFA exam. Uh, CFA is a big part of the program. So when they have events, our students will be invited. We usually have a, a CFA ambassador, student ambassador in the program. We're always looking for ways that we think the CFA can co collaborate with the program. We're also a pro partner of Kaya. So if anyone is interested in writing the examination for Kaya, you also we also uh, can give you scholarships to write that examination. And we're a proud partner of the Canadian Olympic Committee and Game Plan. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a student who was interested in doing a little bit more with Game Plan. So they came up with the idea of having uh, MFIN Gives Back. So that's a program that we run every year. And what it is, it's our students are acting as mentors for former or current Canadian athletes. So we pair our students with Canadian athletes uh, to run them through a stock market simulation. So it's an excellent opportunity for our students to give back to help our, the, our athletes and also the opportunity for our students to meet Canadian athletes who have been competing in the Olympic games. So the, pro the point of this is to help the athletes find, you know, that next, next thing that they're going to do after their career in swimming, cycling, whatever, sporting activity that they were a part of is for them to be able to to figure out their next steps so we're a proud partner of all of these these organizations and we're happy to have them on board so let's take a look at our class profile uh, so this is a current look of the profile for this year's class as you can see the class is very diverse um, we have 86 students average age is around 31 with around five years uh, working experience as you can see a lot of our students come in with cf at least cfa level one cfa level two or three and we have some uh, students who are charter holders in the program 
our program is very diverse in terms of where students are coming from. And, um, and that's what really makes up the experience that you're going to be getting throughout the program. So we have about 80 students, 80% 80 of our students are domestic, 20% international, a nice mix of male and female. And this program has been running since around 2010, 2011, around there. So we have over a thousand alumni. And one of the great things about Smith is our alumni and the passion that our, our students and our alumni have for the program itself, that they're always willing to help. So every time we reach out to them, they're always willing to give back. They're always willing to connect with students and talk to them about what their, their career journey was like. And it's a great way for, for you to continue to build your network. I don't know what it is about the school itself that we have our students who are always willing to give back. People reach out to me to find out how they can get more involved. And even when they have job opportunities, they would reach out and say, hey, you know, I'm looking to have some more Smith grads working in my department. Can you let me know who, if you have anyone who meets this profile or or is interested in working in this area. So it's a really great opportunity for, for students um, to really grow their network and be part of such a, a, a great program. All right, so let's talk about the application process now. I know a lot of you are here and you wanna learn about that. So when you submit your application, your application is not going into a black hole. Uh, as I mentioned, you are gonna be paired with an application advisor who's gonna be reviewing your application and they're going to be taking you through the entire process. So for our program, we have the great privilege of being uh, having our application ad, uh, advisor be Jen Mayer. So Jen has agreed to come and talk to you today about the entire application process and give you some tips on what we look for and how you can basically improve your application. Uh, Jen, are you with me? Yeah. All right, I'll pass it on over to you. Thank you Perfect. so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks, Gary. So as Gary mentioned, um, if you do submit your application, you will be paired with me uh, to work through the next steps. Uh, and actually, we start with a preliminary assessment. And, and actually, I should note that even if you aren't uh, wanting to start your application, you're just kind of interested in wondering where you stand or, um, you know, if you do qualify for the program, I can also uh, work with you in that sense. So you don't have to submit like a formal application to, to get some feedback. Um, so essentially what I'm looking for in the preliminary assessment as well is at your professional and your academic background. So just to ensure that uh, you do meet the requirements of the, the two years of relevant work experience um, and having completed an undergraduate degree. So those are the two minimum requirements that we are looking for. And uh, for example, if you don't meet those requirements, we very, very rarely say no. We'll provide you with feedback in terms of how you can strengthen your application so that down the road, if you this is still of interest to you, that you can pursue the program. Um, so aside from uh, those two items, we're also looking for a successful, uh, sorry, successful completion of the GMAT. Uh, typically, you know, a minimum score of about 580 or completion of the CFA level one. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's two references. So we are aware that you, you are working with busy professionals, and that's probably who you're going to be asking for those references. So they are electronic forms that we do have them complete. It takes about 10 minutes to complete, and then it generates right back into your file. Um, and I should mention to you that as we're working through this process, I'm continuously following up with you, letting you know that, you know, we've received a reference and this is how your file is coming along, just so that we can kind of keep things tight and clean and, and moving at a good pace as well. Um, we see there's, of course, there's a resume. So in that resume, you know, it, it absolutely include everything uh, that would be finance related in terms of your work experience, uh, any, any courses you've taken, any type of involvement whatsoever, um, as well as a cover letter. So, uh, you know, your cover letter, I'll, I'll go into a little more detail about that afterwards, but it's, uh, it's also sort of like a letter of intent. So just sort of outlining, you know, why you want to join the program, what you hope to get out of it. Um, excuse me. And um, just sort of your intention, really, around why you're wanting to pursue the program. Once everything's in and I've had a, a final review of it and it looks good, it looks strong, then we'll, we'll move to the next step, which is an interview. Uh, with a member of the committee. So we'll, it'll most likely be Gary, unless for some reason he's out of office or whatnot, but uh, Gary will have a 30 minute Zoom call with you. Um, and that interview is typically more of a discussion around your application. You know, once you've sort of made it to the interview, uh, there's a good chance that, you know, things will go successfully. 
but um, so it's, it's more of a discussion, a chat around sort of why you want to pursue the program, just to ensure that things are aligning in terms of, you know, where you're wanting to go with your career and if this program makes sense for you. You'll see there that it says say that um, on the right hand side that we, we will accept some applicants that do have less than two years of work experience. So uh, you would have to show, you know, you do have uh, you know a minimum CFA level one or very strong GMAT score with an undergrad in business and um, other sort of involvements like in, in what I mean by that is internships that are finance related um, so that we can sort of see that, you know what, you may not have the two years experience, but you do have experience in other ways. So some tips for completing a competitive application. So when you're sending your resume for preliminary assessment, um, you know, and, and I can also provide you with this feedback as well, is that to ensure that it's up to date, you know, there's dates included, there's your roles and, and include the duties and responsibilities that you hold within each role. Um, again, you know, we're looking for everything that's going to be finance related because the more involvement you have, um, of course, the stronger your application is going to be. So as I mentioned here, example, like your jobs, any volunteer, any internships, any committees that you're part of, or, or uh, you know, courses you've completed outside of your undergraduate degree, be sure to include those in your in your resume. Uh, your references. So I, a lot of times, you know, people will say, well, you know, I've only worked at this in the, within this role for a certain period of time. And my past uh, employer would actually provide a stronger reference. Is that okay? And absolutely, I would I would strongly suggest that you do uh, select two people that have known you, um, worked with you closely, that can very 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 well speak to your abilities, um, which in the end will end you know hopefully providing you with a rave review. Uh, your cover letter. So as I mentioned, like this is your opportunity to to really highlight to the admissions committee, really express like why you want to pursue this program, like what you hope to get out of it and what you you yourself are gonna bring to this program. So not only sort of like, you know, you're excited about, you know, uh, what this program's delivering, but that you, you know, you've got this desire to bring this to the program. Um, and that's, you know, going to differentiate yourself you know, from, from other candidates and, and essentially, you know, strengthen your application. And uh, last but certainly not least, um, and this is, you'll have a lot of help from me in this regard, is completing your application in a timely manner. So I'm usually putting people on a time frame of about one to two weeks. I do know that, you know, we ask for such things. I mentioned one thing I forgot was uh, we do ask for transcripts. Um, if you completed your degree outside of North America, we do require a WES assessment. And I understand that will take some time. So we won't let that hold the process up. We'll let that, you know, follow. So as we're completing your application, aside from um, your, the other items that are coming in, once everything's in, we'll then look to schedule an interview with Gary, have your WES assessment um, to follow. Uh, and as well, it shows commitment to the to the admissions committee as well uh, and drive towards the program. So as I mentioned, I will work as quickly as you can. And if if uh, if even that, I will probably end up kind of reaching out to you and ensuring that we're keeping on that time frame. All right, thank you, Jen. Uh, Perfect, thank you well, thanks again. Details. Yeah, so Jen is gonna hang around uh, until the end to answer any, if you have any specific APLA um, questions regarding uh, your application. Um, the only thing that we require for you to start the process is just a, a copy of your resume and an official transcript. There's no fee for that. Uh, so you can just, if you're not sure about whether or not you qualify, that's what we always say. It's best to just give us, send us a copy of your unofficial transcript and a resume, and then we can do that assessment on our end. All right, let's just get back. All right, so in terms of our fees, uh, here's a breakdown of the cost of the program. So if you're a domestic student, that, that, that means if you have a Canadian PR, if you're a permanent resident here, or if you're a citizen of Canada, then your fees will be 38,817. If you are an international student, then your fees will be 73,300. So these fees include your tuition, books, case uh, studies, and other learning materials meals and accommodations uh, for our in-person sessions, 
uh, and any case competitions that you are taking part in. So all of the, the fee will cover everything. Uh, in terms of the program, this program is OSAP eligible. So if you are eligible to receive OSAP, you can do that with this program because this program is considered a full-time while you were program. So if you are coming to for our second in-person session, which happens in Toronto, uh, we do not have accommodations for those. So if you are interested in staying downtown, that cost will be on, uh, you would have to cover that cost yourself, but your meals are going to be covered for that time as well. Yeah, so that's it from me. Um, here you go. If you're interested in submitting your preliminary assessment, you go to smithqueens.com slash MFIN and you're able to submit that preliminary uh, assessment. If you are hoping to start the program this June as an international student, it may be a little bit difficult, but we do encourage you to still submit your application because uh, we, we're happy to move along because you never know. It's just that there is a backlog right now with in terms of visa uh, processing. Um, so we are, are happy to still accept your, your, um, your application. We're still happy to review it. We're still happy to work with you. Uh, if, you're a, if you are currently a domestic student, we do operate on a rolling admissions basis. I forgot to mention that. So there is no deadline for when you can apply. If you, the program starts in June and you can have all your information to us before the program starts, you could be admitted into the program. So. That's it. Uh, now I'll turn it on over to you to ask me any questions that you may have. I've been talking for a very long time. I'm sure that you're ready now to ask some questions. Um, but thank you so much for, for joining us. And now I'll pass it on over to you to ask any questions that you may have. We do have a couple minutes so we can address, answer any questions that you have. And Jen is also here to answer any application specific questions. So I'm just going to turn now to the Q&A. Again, pardon, I have another screen here. So if you see me looking away. Any bursaries or financial aid available? So the only thing available through the program itself is we do have an entrance scholarship, which is something that you don't have to apply for. It's given to you at the point of your, your admission or your offer letter. Um, that being said, it's not that much. It, at most, we, we give away, it's about $5,000 that is going to be given. Um, anything else, you can use the Queen's website to browse to see if there's anything, uh, awards that you qualify for, because you may have a specific situation that we're not aware of. So you can always look at the, the Queen's website, but from the program side of things, that's the only thing we have is that entrance scholarship. Okay, let's see, next question. How does one qualify for the entrance scholarship? So it's really based on your full on your full application, uh, your work experience, your grades, um, your interview. So all of these things in am amalgamation, that's how it's determined whether or not you receive the entrance scholarship. But again, it's not something that you can apply for. Great question. Next question. For the courses offered in person in Toronto, is there an option to attend virtually and what are the usual timings? So this is a good question. Um, so the it's only the program now if you have to be able to commit to in person. Um, we're, we have offered this blended version in the past, but we are moving away from that blended version just because we based on feedback from our current students, based on feedback from our faculty, the experience itself, one of the things I think that they're missing is that uh, student experience, getting to know your cohort, getting to build your network so that you will be required if you're interested in taking this person, you have to be able to attend the program in person, at least 80% of the program is going to be in person, so you will be required to attend in person, um, only a couple courses itself will be off offered virtually because we do want to offer some flexibility so that you don't always have to come in person, but the majority of the program is going to be an in-person uh, attendance. So you will have to commit to being in, uh, in person if you are interested in taking this program. Okay, next question. As you said, program haven't 
doesn't have an application fee. That is correct. So if you are interested in taking, if you are interested in applying, there is no application fee. So you can submit that unofficial transcript and your resume, and we're happy to review that and work with you. If you are admitted into the program, however, you will have to pay a $2,000 deposit, which secures your seat for the year, a non-refundable $2,000 deposit, which uh, is non-refundable. So that's, that's, um, so, so there is no application fee. Uh, next question, please share some roles where students of the last two graduating class have joined after the program. Uh, so that one, I can only, I, I don't have specifics, but I know a lot of our students work in equity research. Um, they work in uh, corporate finance. We have uh, students who go into consulting, not many though. Uh, so it's the traditional finance role, a lot of equity research and uh, analysts. So a lot of people go into different areas of finance that they're interested in. I just wanna make this caveat. We do have a lot of people who are interested in getting into investment banking before they come into the program. And we always have to stress investment banking is extremely difficult to get into regardless of whether you take this program or any other program. It's not something that we, we, we always have to tell people ahead of time. If you're interested in in investment banking, by the time you're looking at these programs, what is your plan B? Because investment banking is extremely difficult. In my time, I've only seen one student from our program get into investment banking because typically they look for, for investment banking uh, roles. They typically look for people who are coming out from undergrad. Um, and we think it's because, you know, they can really help mold um, those, those uh, applicants or those new employees into, you know, their culture. Uh, but with our program, because you are, you do come with some work experience, it's very difficult for you to get into investment banking. But our students get into all different types of positions in terms of um, finance once they're finished with the program. Next question is for the June 2023 intakes. The blended program is no longer available. That's something we will be communicating to our students. Um, the blended program will not be available uh, everybody who's enrolled, I will be sending out a message to them to let them know we will not be offering the blended program for next year. Um, unfortunately, uh, it just wasn't, it just from a, from a, um, operational side of things, it just wasn't, it, was, it wouldn't make sense for this coming, this coming year. Um, so we are going to reach out to our students who are currently enrolled to let them know that they will have the option of moving into our in-person if they can. Uh, if not, then we do have other programs available at the school that does have that blended format. We have the MMA, we have AMBA, if they are interested in getting something that is fully online. Thank you. Uh, any pre-work required before classes begin and what level of IT background one would need for FinTech and AI, oops, it jumped, for an AI finance electives? Uh, no pre-work is required. Uh, we do we do send out at the beginning. Um, we do send out our workshop, our portal, sorry, so that students can go in there and kind of work work towards um, just getting themselves familiar with the portal. Um, but there's no no nothing really pre-work. Uh, anything that you feel like you may need to work on, uh, we encourage you to use our Udemy platform to to get familiar with with uh, anything that you feel like you may need some help. And no, you do not need any IT background to, to be involved with the, in, to get to do the FinTech or AI electives. The electives itself is not, it's not anything you'll have to work on coding or anything like that. So our students doesn't necessarily, don't necessarily have like an IT background because this is a finance program. So we, it's, it's pretty high level with regards to like the program inside of things. Thank you. Does this program run uh, one, I guess once a year? If we miss joining the program in June, we should wait for 2024. And another question is, can we defer our program? So yes, the program only starts once every year. So it's June, 2023, if you're interested in graduating in the year 2024. If you're not able to join the program this year, yes, we do offer students the opportunity to defer. I believe you only have the opportunity to defer a maximum of two times before 
we would have to close your, your file. Um, but de it de really depends on your situation and, and why you're deferring. Um, but yes, if you are interested in the program, it only runs once every year. All right, so on the Queen's website, there is an Ontario graduate scholarship. What are the qualifications for this? So I am not familiar with all of the scholarships that we have available. I would encourage you to look into the scholarship itself, look at what the requirements are. It's probably listed there as well. If it's not, you can also, there's a contact for our awards team. You can feel free to contact them and they'll give you more information. All right, sorry. Sorry, it's jumping around a bit. Uh, let's see the next one. Can you share placement report? Uh, not at this time, no. Uh, I cannot share placement report. The, the reason for that is um, in the past, our information has been a very difficult to gather because of the, it's, our program is not like a uh, full-time MBA program where everyone quits their job. They start the program and so like everybody has, uh, they start at base level, they start at ground level. Most of our students are working full-time while taking the program. Some people get employed while taking the program, but it's really up to the students to report that to us. And sometimes the information or the data that we get, it's not clean enough to really share. We're, we're working on that. Our career side is working on getting that information a little bit more from our students and getting that report a little bit more. Our percentage is high in terms of people being employed uh, after the program, but again, most of our students are working while taking the program. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to see what the actual percentage is. Um, so I don't have anything that I can actually share that would be helpful at this time. What is uh, average salary a graduate is getting and how much time he gets a job? a job after graduation. Uh, I think this, this salary average, the last time we checked, but again, this, this can be skewed. It's about 80 something K, uh, I, I believe was the last thing I saw. Uh, but again, it's not based on full response from our students after they graduate. Most times people leave and we don't hear from them. So we're not sure what people's salaries are. And then it's, again, it's a tricky question for them to answer. So some people are not saying what their salaries are after graduation. Uh, but I think the last I saw was about 80 something thousand um, on average for students once they finish the program. In terms of how much time it takes, again, another difficult question to answer based on the responses from our graduates once they finish. This is something that we are working on. Our career center is working on trying to get more of that clean data. The data is not clean enough to be able to, to be able to, to give you an accurate answer for this question. All right, next question. So I'm only taking a couple more, just, uh, just bearing in mind the time, but I love these questions. Great questions, everyone. Uh, it mentions that Toronto classes are every Monday, 6 to 9 p.m., and all day Saturdays every two weeks. Um, I don't know if that's a question, but yes, that is correct. Um, that's, that's the typical design of the, the question, uh, of the program, sorry, is that classes are once every Monday, Tuesday, and every Saturday, Sunday, but it will be full, full days on a, on a weekend, and on a Monday, it will be 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, next question is, is Bloomberg terminal training available with the program? Uh, great question. Yes, we do have Bloomberg terminals available at the facility. Um, this is, again, one of the, 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 one of the reasons why um, the whole blended format of the program was adjusted. It's because Bloomberg used to, when the pandemic hit, we were able to offer the online um, the online terminals, so you, but then Bloomberg removed that. And now it's only if you were in person that you can use a Bloomberg terminal. So we do have three Bloomberg terminals at the facility that are accessible to students. And if you're interested in doing the training, you do have the op opportunity to get certified in uh, with Bloomberg uh, through the terminals as well. So yes, it's not available through, it's, it's available through the program. It's not a requirement of the program. Great question. So last question uh, I'm going to answer. 
Sorry, it's jumping around again. All right, so last question. Uh, great questions, everyone. But if you have more questions, feel free, please feel free to reach out to us. Happy to answer any and all of your questions. Can you please confirm if the days in the Toronto location are fixed for June 2023 intakes? Um, sorry, can you clarify this one? Uh, what, do you, what do you mean if the, the days in the Toronto locations are fixed? Uh, do you mean if it's in person? Uh, so the program will start off in Kingston in June. Monday, 6 to 9 p.m. Yeah, most likely that's that's going to be the schedule. So it's either going to be a Monday, 6 to 9 p.m. or Tuesday, 6 to 9 p.m. That's what we're going for for this June. Uh, Saturdays, yes, it will be Saturdays all day, every two weeks. Yes, that is confirmed. That's how the structure of the program has always been. So it's either, it's either going to be a Monday, 6 to 9 p.m. or a Tuesday, 6 to 9 p.m., but it's going to be Saturdays every other weekend so you'll have a class every other weekend for that so thank you for the clarification um yeah i know i know that a lot of people uh they are working and they do have families uh, this is a professional uh program so we do know that people want to make sure that they know what's what's happening in the program and that's that's one of the things that we're striving for to be as transparent as possible in terms of the schedule so that you can plan your lives all right, so thank you so much for the great questions, everyone. If I didn't get to everyone or I wasn't able to answer all the questions or, or you still have, you still need some clarification on anything that I may have mentioned or Jen may have mentioned. Jen, thank you so much again for joining today. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We're more than willing and able to answer any and all of your questions. Um, we thank you so much for joining us here today. The one thing I want to remind you of, if you are interested in learning more about the program or you're interested in finding out if you qualify for the program, there is no application fee. All you have to do is go to the website, smithqueens.ca.com slash mfin, and then you can submit your copy of your resume, your up-to-date resume and your unofficial transcript and that will give us enough information to be able to to work with you to let you know if you qualify for the program uh, so thank you again for joining thank you for the great questions enjoy the rest of your day the rest of your week and take care